once again, thanks very much, Reed Corporate, for the opportunity to present here today. New World Resources is ASX listed, and some people are surprised that we've got an asset in, uh, in the USA. Uh, personally, I've been operating in the USA for the best part of 15 years. Um, just last week, we completed the acquisition of the Antler project, so we now own 100% of the asset. We exercised a four-year option to acquire Antler about 18 months ago, and last week we paid 1.35 million US dollars to take 100% ownership. So it is a very low-cost acquisition, and it is an asset that New World now owns outright. So there is zero risk to us losing that asset. Equally, by taking 100% ownership as we did last week, we can move the project through permitting into production with extreme confidence because we know we have outright ownership and we have outright control. In terms of capital structure, New World's currently um, got just under 1.6 billion shares on issue, trading at just over 7.5 cents, which gives us a capitalisation of about $120 million. We have, at 30, 30 September, we will report that we have $18.2 million cash at bank, and that's by way of a extremely well-supported capital raise that we completed several months ago, where we raised $20 million at 10 cents, so at a, a, um, a substantial premium to the current pr share price. We raised $20 million predominantly to institutional investors, and the institu institutional investors are extremely supportive of us exploring Antler and taking Antler to production as quickly as we pra practicably can. And just, just as an aside, and I am going to focus uh, the rest of, of this discussion on our Antler project, but just as an aside, we have announced our intention to demerge our cobalt assets into a separate listed entity that will have a separate management team, and I'd be very happy to discuss that with anyone if, if they have interest in those cobalt assets. In terms of Antler, as I said, we ex executed an option to acquire 100% of the project 18 months ago in January 2020. The project is one of the highest grade copper deposits in the world. We are returning some extremely high grades from this with extremely good thicknesses. And with the high grades comes an opportunity to develop a, a high grade operation for low capital cost, which should have high margins, but equally, we can bring that project into production very quickly. We haven't got a long lead time to production like a lot of, a lot of copper explorers who are searching for giant porphyry copper deposits. We will be looking at a relatively small operation, a relatively small being three quarters of a million to a million tonnes per annum for an initial production profile, but our grades will be the order of three, maybe slightly higher percent copper equivalent. So we will have an initial production profile of the order of 30,000 metric tonnes of copper equivalent. Not huge, but very achievable for a junior to fund ourselves to dictate our own course into production with no dependence on external funding. Indeed, a large proportion of our project finance we expect will come from debt finance because the, the economics of developing this project will be extremely robust. Now, for the course of today's presentation, I'd just like to touch on the history of the project, just so that those who, who this is the first time they've been um, introduced to the project will understand where we're coming from. Talk a, a little bit about what we have achieved over the last 21 months since we secured the option, and as importantly, what's ahead for us. When we acquired the project, copper price was around $2.80 a pound. Today it's $4.44 a pound. We deliberately acquired it because we saw that copper price was highly likely to rise, and we've been vindicated in that. Equally, the Antler Project is located on privately owned land in northern Arizona. That is going to help us streamline the project into permitting, through permitting and into production. So where we are, we're up two hours south of Las Vegas and three hours north of, north of Phoenix. There's a cluster of 30 or 40 known VMS deposits up in this part of the world. The biggest of these VMS deposits is the United Verde deposit that sits about 150 kilometres to the east of Antler. And there they mine 33 million tonnes of high-grade ore that graded 4.8% copper. So very high-grade deposits, very sizable deposits. 
just nine kilometres away from the United Verde deposit is another little deposit called UVX. There they mined four million tonnes of ore, and that ore was running 10.2% copper. Again, another extremely high-grade deposit. So these deposits in northern Arizona can be very big, and they are invariably very high grade. We can see with a photo in the middle of, page, middle of this page, there's still a head frame standing at the antler deposit. Antler was last mined in 1970. And indeed, the last phase of work that was done on antler prior to our involvement was in 1975. And that work in 1975 really highlighted to us what the opportunity looked like here. So that phase of work comprised a series of deep drill holes. Over 500 metres a strike, down to 550 vertical metres. There was only nine holes drilled, but of those nine holes, eight of them hit high-grade mineralisation. It was, it was actually phenomenal exploration, and all credit should go to the geologists who were behind that, because this was broad space drilling. In most cases, the holes were over 200 metres apart, and to drill to, to 550 vertical metres was extremely bold, but eight of those nine holes intersected massive sulphide mineralisation and high-grade massive sulphide mineralisation. That was the very last phase of work that was done on the project. There had historically been 70,000 tonnes of ore mined from the deposit, and all of that ore came from within 150 metres of surface, with 38,000 tonnes of those coming from within 100 metres of surface. So really the depth extensions and the strike extensions of this deposit had not been touched. But in 1975, following that, that drilling program, the very last thing that was done was Standard Metals Corp, who is the company that we purchased the asset from last week. Then Standard Metals Corp calculated a resource of just under 5 million tonnes at 2% copper and 4% zinc. So that is our starting point. That is a base case, and we had confidence when we executed agreements, we had confidence that that is a base case resource. But mineralisation was open in every direction. It was open to the south, to the north, and, to the, and at depth. So what's New World done since we acquired the project in January? January 2020, so 21 months ago. We've, we've consistently had a drill rig on site at times two and at times three and we've completed 78 holes for over 31,000 metres. Today we have two rigs, two diamond core rigs still, still drilling, and a third rig is due back on the project next week. We've completed four geophysical surveys. We've completed magnetics. So the image on the, on the right hand, on my right hand, oh, sorry, on my left hand side here, shows a magnetic anomaly that coincides with the known mineralisation. Historic stoping, was to a maximum depth of 150 metres and over a strike length of 150 metres. The coincident magnetic anomaly that sits on top of the deposit is over 1,000 metres long. That indicates there is a long strike potential here. So we completed magnetics. This is massive sulphide, so we subsequently completed ground EM. I used to be a geophysicist and I was very, very surprised when we completed ground EM over massive sulphides and there was no diagnostic response. But that's just the nature of the deposit. So we then completed ground IP. And the middle diagram on the bottom here shows that there was a very, very strong IP response immediately south of the head frame. And I'll touch on the exploration success that we've had as a result of that. And then more recently we've completed another ground geophysics survey, a CSAMT survey, that has highlighted slightly different geophysical responses that again has led to discovery of further mineralisation further south of the head frame, same direction that the magnetics was sending us. So as a course of that drilling program and, and as a result of following up the ground geophysics targets, then we've now delineated definitely two very thick high grade shoots of mineralisation and we think that we are onto a third parallel shoot with the mineralisation remaining completely open at depth and I'll I'll talk through a couple of slides to illustrate the thickness, the depth, and the continuity of the mineralisation that we've delineated to date. But as a result of this work, we're very confident that we've delineated more tonnes because the mineralisation that we've been intersecting has been a lot, lot thicker. We've extended it deeper, so we're confident that we've expanded on that historic resource base of 4.7 million tonnes. 
And in doing this drilling, that we've improved the confidence in the distribution of the resources. So previously, with wide space drilling that was in parts 200, 250 metres apart, there was a lot of uncertainty about the continuity of the mineralisation between historic holes. We have closed up that spacing and of the 78 holes that we have drilled, 77 of them have intersected massive sulphide mineralisation. The only one that didn't intersect massive sulphide mineralisation was the very shallowest hole that we drilled at the very northern end of the deposit. So we are extremely confident that over 500 metres of strike, down to almost 600 vertical metres now, massive sulphide mineralisation persists and is continuous, hence we have a great deal of confidence that these resources are continuous. And as a result of this work, we've exercised the option early. Two and a half years early, we paid 1.35 million US last week to take 100% ownership of the project so that we can streamline Antler back into production. If we just look at a series of long sections now, this was the status of the project when we inherited, well, when we exercised our, or when we took the option over the project 21 months ago. In pink at the very top are the shallow historic stopes. And in blue dots is a series of holes that have been drilled from underground. And more significantly, the white dots are historic holes that were drilled from surface. We can see three of these white holes that are circled with blue dots that had slightly thicker mineralisation. One hole had seven metres of mineralisation, one had four and a half metres of mineralisation, and one had 11 metres of mineralisation in it. All three of those historic holes sat directly underneath the historic workings. So we postulated that there might be thicker high-grade mineralisation extending at depth underneath there. While we were doing those geophysical surveys, we set about drilling underneath the historic workings. And this is what the long section looks like now. We've added the yellow dots, the 78 holes that we've drilled. Indeed, on this diagram, there is only 69 holes added because we've still got assay results pending for nine holes. But there's 69 holes here illustrated on the long section to show that we've closed up the spacing between those historic broadly spaced holes and we've intersected consistently some phenomenal results. One of the better results, 23 metres at 3.5% copper and 9% zinc, which translates to 23 metres at 6.7% copper equivalent, but that's 6.7% copper equivalent on a metallurgically recovered basis. So if, if we consider 100% of the value of the metals in that intercept, then that would report as 23 metres at 9.1% copper equivalent. Extremely high grades. This is not like the porphyries that some, some companies are chasing where they might be interested in high grade porphyry copper mineralisation that might be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8% copper. This is running 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9% copper. An order of magnitude higher grade. That order of magnitude higher grade means lower capex, less surface impact when it comes to permitting, smaller scale operations, faster lead time to production, and a low capital cost that New World will be able to manage itself. But that, that intercept of 23 metres at 6.7 wasn't a one-off. You can see from the, the list of numbers there, 25 at 3, 3 and 8.9, 30 at 2% copper and, and 5% zinc, 23 metres at 2.5% copper and 5.6% zinc. These are results only from underneath the historic workings. Once we had the geophysics results at hand, we started moving south. The IPP anomaly that we delineated, which is a centre, centre diagram here, the first hole that we drilled into that IP anomaly in October last year intersected 22 metres at 2.2% copper equivalent. We've subsequently followed up that up, up dip, down dip, with results such as 17 metres at 5.5% copper equivalent. 11 metres at 6.1% copper equivalent. And as we go deeper and deeper, that mineralisation is getting better and better. It is getting thicker, it is getting broader, and we believe that we're getting closer to the source. And further to that, further south, than we've ex been exploring more recently, the CSAMT anomaly, and again, their results such as ANT62, we've reported 10.5 metres at 2.5% copper equivalent. 
Again, this system, the, the possible new shoot at the end, seems to be improving with depth. So we postulate, are we just on the tip of the iceberg? Is what's above it, what's, what we've drilled to date, uh, is that just sitting above the source of the mineralisation? And can we double the resources, triple the resources as we go deeper and deeper? That's part of the exploration potential. But what I do know is we're moving towards having a critical mass that will justify a standalone mining operation. So we are going to concurrently move Antler through mine permitting, through feasibility study, as quickly as we practically can to maximise our exposure to the current high copper price. And while we do that, we will continue to explore. So we will continue to make the resource bigger. Now, in order to do that, over the coming months, we have a very clear plan mapped out. Later this month, during October, we will declare our maiden jork resource. It will exceed the 4.7 million tonnes. By how much, I don't know, but we will exceed that because we have infilled that zone that was drilled previously and we have hit thicker and thicker mineralisation, which means we've added more and more tonnes and added more and more metal. With that maiden jork resource, we will do initial mine studies. We'll have those initial mine studies completed by early next year, and those initial mine studies will be fed into mine permit applications. The mine permitting process will be 18 to 24 months, and through that 18 to 24 month period, we will concurrently expand the resource by drilling deeper and deeper, expand the resource by drilling further south, but we will also complete feasibility studies so we completely de-risk this project over the next two years so that as soon as we have mine permits in place, we have as big a resource as we practicably can and we have the utmost confidence that we will move this project into production. Thank you.